Hi and welcome to another tutorial folks. This is Dr. Magal. We are going to uh, create a counter. This is going to count from 0 to 99. Uh, remember this is part 5 of the Digital Logic uh, Gate Simulator app. And in this tutorial I'm also going to introduce you to virtual uh, link out and virtual link in as you can see on the toolbar uh, right next to clock. So what are these and how do they work? They are simply just indicators, okay? So if I give you one example, on the top left, you see I have a clock set to one second, uh, one hertz frequency, and then I'm using this link out thing which is hooked up to the clock. Um, I'm going to hook up the uh, wires to the virtual link in, and then at the output of those, I have three different LEDs connected. These are two different colors. And if I run the simulation, basically I have the same input clock being feeded into all the LEDs uh, using those virtual link outs and virtual link ins. Uh, one of the advantage of uh, doing that is it's really helpful when you have a very busy looking logic diagram. If you have a lot of circuit uh, components in there, this just brushes up uh, and makes your circuit look a little clean. Okay. Notice virtual link, link out and uh, link in, they all have the same uh, uh, identifier name, which is P1, and I have three LEDs connected to it basically. So they all are blinking at, uh, at a frequency of one hertz. Uh, so all of them are on, and then all of, them, all of them are off. Okay, but that's not what we are going to do only in this tutorial. We are actually going to create a counter. So notice here I have a T flip flop. So Remember, if you go to my digital uh, electronics lecture series, when we learned about the T flip flop, which is basically uh, uh, an extension of the JK flip flop, JK uh, both are shorted, right? You have J and K, the inputs are shorted to T. So if T is one, then J and K both are one. If T is zero, then both J, K and, uh, and K are zero. We know uh, from our lecture that when J and K both are zero, basically uh, your next state would be whatever is stored in the memory, okay? If T is zero, the your flip-flop is going to act as a memory and the next state is going to be whatever the uh, whatever is stored in the memory. When J and K are one, that means the next state is going to be the complement of the previous state means it's going to toggle so if the input is so if the next uh, present state is zero then the next state is going to be one if the present state is one then the next state is going to be zero so it's basically going to toggle and we use that property of t flip flop to create counters okay so if i go here notice my t's in my flip flop they all are connected to uh, one right here um, I have a clock which is set to one hertz and then the output queue is connected to virtual link out because it's going to go from zero to 99 so we basically need um, four T flip-flops and in total because uh, we're going to have um, going from zero to 99 uh, I would basically need eight total T flip-flops and then hook them up with the uh, with this seven segment. But I'm gonna break it up into segments of four T flip flops, and then copy and pasting it uh, for the other segment also. Okay, it's not complete uh, right now because I still need to work on the logic for this uh, seven segment. But let's get started. How we uh, can make something like this using this digital logic simulator app. So let's get rolling. Again, folks, if you haven't uh, watched the part one where I introduce how the interface works for this app, I strongly encourage you to watch that tutorial because I'm not going to go into tiny bit of detail. I'm just going to create the circuit. So I'm going to start off by pulling four T flip flops. And also from lecture number 17, uh, we know that not lecture number 17 actually this is going to be lecture number uh, 19 in which we learned about counters and one of the property of the counter was if you are going to make an up counter then you have to uh, look at this right here if you are going to create an up counter uh, using the 
uh, negative edge of the clock then here your Q is going to be the clock of the uh, the, uh, the falling flip-flop so you have 40 flip-flops right here so I started off with the one Hertz clock which is hooked up to the first T flip-flop now I am going to uh, pull VCC because the input T is going to be hooked up with with one so I'll just apply logic one here and this one is hooked up to all the T's of each individual flip-flop and the output of each flip-flop is going to become the input of the uh, is going to become the clock of the falling flip-flop so the output here will become the clock over here this output right here will become the clock for this flip-flop and this output over here will become the clock for this falling flip-flop okay um, remember this represents the most significant bit right here I can label it right here this represents the most significant bit This is my least significant bit. Okay, all right. I'm also going to pull in the virtual link out and link in now. And I need four of those. I'm going to connect the output of each flip-flop to these V-Link outs. And then I need four link in. Let's connect the virtual link out. Now I'm going to pull the seventh segment here now. My most significant bit of the T flip flop goes here. The least significant bit goes at the bottom. And similarly this goes over here and then this goes over here okay so if I run the simulation here if I go here and look, click on this flash looking icon and if I click here notice it's gonna start counting from 0 to 9 let's see what happens 9 and then it's gonna go to A B C D E and F and then rolls back to zero and this is happening because for a four bit you can have a combination going from zero to 15 that's what your range is but we don't want that to happen in this case because we would want uh, to display going from zero to 99 so once it reaches nine it should reset itself to zero and then the other segment should go up by one so in order to do that, I'm going to actually pull uh, an end gate here. Over here. And the output input to the, this end gate, there will be four of them. Okay. Because we want to reset when the logic goes to 100. Zero, zero, 
one that makes nine and then once that reaches uh, nine we want it to reset so this is our uh, most significant bit that goes in here okay least significant bit goes over here okay now the code for the nine is what the binary code for nine is one zero zero one uh, we're going to need two inverters here because the logic of the end gate is when all the inputs are high only then the output is high correct so I'm going to uh, hook this up with the input of these end gates and then also uh, the output P12 right here uh, and then P13 is connected to these okay now notice what happened what's gonna happen now I'm going to uh, include a reset clear option to these two flip-flops okay to all of them just put a check here click on this uh, uh, gear looking icon and then put a check on declare and I'm going to hook this output of this end gate to the clear that means on the display when it reaches 9 the flip-flops are reset they go back to 0 okay okay let's start the simulation and let's see what happens now okay all right so it starts with 0 goes to 1 2 3 and hopefully once it reaches 9 it reset itself to 0 and then start counting back again there you go you see that okay now we're gonna need uh, uh, one more segment because remember we are going to uh, represent the numbers in the range from 0 to 99 so what I'm gonna do is basically I'm going to copy and paste this whole thing right here so select the components now Once all the components are selected, just click on duplicate here and then here you go. Okay. The only thing is going to that that's going to change over here is whenever it starts off over here, as you can see the counter starts over here at the top and then again it goes to 9, then we would want to actually trigger the circuit which is below so instead of having this clock right here I'm actually going to use the output of the end gate as a clock so I'm gonna get rid of this clock right here this clock right here and then I'm going to use the output of the end gate over here to trigger the clock of this T flip-flop this means so if I uh, maybe what I could do here is put them side by side so this goes here and then this goes over here oh the whole thing is moving let's undo this okay and then I'm just gonna move this right over here okay right now it's already 99 so if I run the solution it goes to 0 and then start counting now hoping that if this reaches 9 then it will reset itself to 0 and the other uh, counter goes up by one which it does okay and it's gonna keep on doing it till it gets to 99 and what it gets to 99 it will then reset itself again that's how the logic is set to the purpose of using this end gate is to basically once it reaches 9 that would enable and work as a clock for the falling segment that you see at the bottom so this is your very simple counter using T flip flop. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a very simple one. I would want you to try this. And one of the advantage of using this virtual link out in Lincoln is your system looks very clean. Uh, and you can use them wherever you like in your circuit later on as well. If you want to do a triple digit uh, zero from nine, 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 uh, then, you know, it, it, it becomes really easy. Uh, so, uh, enjoy your rest of the day. I hope you like this video. Uh, please don't uh, forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I shall be back with another video soon. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Bye.